Okay, so for this video, we're going to be talking about how we can adjust the width and height of cells. And once again, there are various ways to do this. So I'll show you a few different options and then you can choose based on your preference. All right, so to get started, let's say we want to change the height of cell A1. The first option we can do is come up to the Home tab and go over to the Cells group and click the drop down for Format. And underneath Cell Size, we see an option for Row Height. So if we give that a click, right now our current row height is 15. And if we want to make the row larger, we can change this to 25. Now our row one is definitely larger than the rest of our rows. Same thing goes for column width. If we go back to the home tab and click the drop down for format, we can choose adjust column width. And currently the column width is 8.43 and we can change that to a larger number. Now column A is definitely much wider. Another option is to move our cursor to the bottom of the row that we want to adjust. So we want to adjust row one. And as you can see, our cursor changed to a vertical double-headed arrow. Now we can click and drag to the row height of our liking. So if we click and drag down, it will expand the row. Or if we click and drag up, it will condense the row. Same thing goes for columns. If I want to expand column A, I would move my cursor all the way to the right. Now we have a horizontal double arrow with a black line intersecting it. And we can click and drag to the right to expand the column. Or we can click and drag to the left to make our column narrower. And if we look at cell A1, our text extends past our column width. Same thing goes for cell A16. Count blank gets cut off because there is a value in the cell next to it. So we would definitely want to make this column wider so we can read our full text values. Now a quick tip, if we move our cursor between columns A and B again, and once our cursor changes, we can give this a double click, it would automatically adjust the width of the column to fit all the text within that column. So to show you, I'm going to give this a double click. Now the column width fits monthly expenses and count blank. We can use this technique across multiple columns or multiple rows. For example, if I select column A through F, I can move my cursor between any of the columns within the selection and drag left or right to expand or condense the columns. Or I can go back in between any of the columns and give it a double click to automatically adjust every single column to the correct width. Now column E looks a little too condensed, so what I'm gonna do is select the columns again and maybe adjust the width to right here. Same thing goes for the rows. If we select all of our rows, move our cursor between any of the rows, and we can click and drag to adjust the row height as well. And one more option is to select a row, give the row a right click, and go down to the row height, and we can adjust the row height from here. And before we move on to the next lecture, there is one more thing that I need to point out. For example, let's say I'm adjusting column B and I want to make it narrower. If I go too narrow, look what happens to my date value. It's just a bunch of pound signs now. Now this could potentially throw people off and make them assume that there is an error, but in reality it's just because the column width is too small. So if I go up between column B and C again, give it a double click, now our date value is back to how it was. Now in column A, all we have is text values. And if I adjust the width of column A to be smaller, Notice that our text values don't go to the pound symbols. This is because the pound symbols only appear if you have numeric data within the cells. So this is definitely something to keep your eye out for.